brothers and sisters. My name is Elder Philip Gill and I'm an apostle with the restored branch of Jesus Christ. I'd like to talk to you today about something that is um, special to our branch and that is the great European journey of all time. The name Shinar appears eight times in the Hebrew Bible. It refers to Babylonia. However, this could mean Babylon in northern Babylonia or Erech in or Uruk in southern Babylonia. We don't exactly know where it is, but we know that it existed and that area will exist today. Either of the locations are approximately 3,442 miles in duration across very rough terrain. And with animals, children and elderly people, tents, belongings, all sorts of stuff. It was probably not possible to travel more than two or three miles per day. And they wouldn't have traveled more than five days a week for reasons I'll go into later. We read in the first verse of the fourth chapter of the book of Jaranek, page 13, that it took many years. This would be so, as there would be no walking at all on the Sabbath, and with hundreds of people, it would have taken them a day to encamp and a day to decamp. So they probably only walked for maybe three or four days to get the um, um, camp moving and ceasing. It would be impossible to walk more than the two or three miles I've said already. The calculations, and I've, I've used a six day week, which I've already said would be virtually impossible to do. But if you take a six day week, and it's on, and only lasting two to four hours of walking time. And here again, you've got to think there's elderly, there's animals to um, uh, move along. It would take several years, and I'll cover exactly how long later on. The book of Jaranek on page six, chapter two, The Long Journey, we read from verse six, when Aranak had heard these words, he commanded Shiblon to move the people and all their bands northwards over the mountains, possibly foothills of the Urals. What we do know is that if you look at a map, it would not have been possible for them initially with, to have gone west. Well, it would have been. They, would, they could have made a mistake. But we have to remember these people were led by God. They were led by a prophet. They wouldn't have gone west, going through Turkey, for the simple reason, as soon as they'd have come to the bit that, that the narrowest part, they'd have had to have crossed the Bosphorus. They couldn't have done. There was nowhere in that area where they could have got enough wood. So where they probably did, and I, I, I've, I've tried to spell out here as close as I can, because nobody knows an exact route, but basically... If they set out from ancient Babylon, now Iraq, our next people would have taken a northerly route through modern-day eastern Turkey, skirting Azerbaijan into Georgia. We must remember that at this time, approximately 2,350 years after the flood, no one we know of lived on, their, lived on that route. There wasn't anybody. It would have been completely barren. From modern day Georgia, we see them heading towards what we now know as Rostov-on-Don, which is Russia, which is the almost the southern western tip of Russia. Then westward to Moldova and over the mountains of Switzerland to Geneva. The final leg of their journey was through Vienna, which we now, I'm, I'm using now all modern words, there wouldn't have been a Vienna but through Vienna to skirt Paris and finally resting at Karnak. Now let's just go back. Lionek and his followers split somewhere either at or soon after Rostov-on-Don 
and headed into what we now know as modern day Russia. We know that because there wasn't any other place for him to have gone. He obviously didn't go westward, which is the route I've outlined. He had to go east, and the only place east of him at that time was what we now know of Ru as Russia, on the steppes of Russia, or the plains of Russia. The book of Jeronek tells us that on the way to Britain, these people who were in the book of Jeronek um, they built many monuments to God. Now, research, modern day research, has revealed stone circles in U Ukraine. They're the most famous in that area. It, they're, in a, they're in a place called Kartel Ortonka near the Danube. Now, why would that have been almost certainly done by these people? Because, as we've said earlier, before they went through, there was no people living there. This was after the flood. There was nobody to have built it other than them. So if you see stone circles, monuments on the route, and there's many, and I'll go into this, they would have been built by the people that we read in the book of Jeronek. Um, <clears throat> Romania too, when they would have gone through um, the um, southern end of Romania as circles and rock monuments notably in the valley of the, of the Palatini River. Austria is also famous in rock circles. The Hafnerberg Steinkreiser is also around 3,000 years old and finally Karnak in France the final mainland European home for Aronek and his family before set, setting out for Britain. Here we find the greatest concentration of circles and stone monuments anywhere in Europe. We find evidence of whole swathes of deforestation that fits the narrative of them using wood to construct ships. And finally, we can see more and more of the historical evidence in the archaeological evidence of modern day. But before we finish, let me just read to you something out of the Book of Mormon. In third, just in case there's any doubt that what we're saying is, is accurate in third nephi verse 7 sorry third nephi 7 verse 16 we read this this much did the father command me that i should tell unto them that other sheep i have which are not of this fold them also i must bring and they shall hear my voice and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. There can't be one fold and one shepherd unless he speaks to them all. Which is why I am convinced and have a deep and abiding testimony that the things you read of in the book of Jaranek, they're about a people whose, uh, uh, whose, whose progeny and, and, and came from the ark, Moses. They populated southern Turkey and Iraq sorry, uh, Noah, uh, when they left the ark. And these people are these other folds that we speak about. And we know that there will be, before the second coming, other folds found, other scriptures. And we know that we should treat the book of Jaranek no differently than we treat the Bible and the Book of Mormon. The Bible is a history of people living in the, the, what we now know as the Middle East. The Book of Mormon is about a people who travelled from the Middle East and made the American continent their home. And we know the Book of Jaranek is populated by people here in the British Isles who also travelled from the Middle East and they all have a connection because nobody living on earth, wherever we find them, can say that their ancestry just sprung up there. Everybody's ancestry all over the world came from the Middle East. It had to do because that we know is where Noah and the ark came to rest. Everyone else was wiped out. So everybody we see alive in the Book of Mormon, the Bible, the book of Jaranek, 
any other book that comes about all came from China. Everyone. So these things are important. Further on in 3rd Nephi 8 um, verse 4 we read this. But now I go unto the Father and also to show myself unto the lost tribes of Israel. Now surely, surely no Christian can be telling me that these people who are so important that Christ has to go and speak to them, and we're not talking now necessarily about the people in the book of Jonah, we're talking about the lost tribes. I don't even want to think about the fact that they do not have any body in all of those tribes that doesn't want to commune with God, that doesn't want to commune with Christ, that haven't written it down and don't have a history. Somewhere down the line, this year, next year, five years from now, six months from now, we don't know when. But those people will come forth and they will have scripture. It might be not what we have, but it'll be their own. And it'll be their history of how they dealt with their God in their way, in their terms. But all of those tribes, all of those tribes, when we say they're lost, we know they once came from Shinar. Because there was nobody alive, as we said, that isn't from there. When we're telling you this story about our journey, we're talking about the people that were in the book of Jaranek. But the loads of other people that wandered off, moved on. Some people stayed where they were. But nevertheless, everybody on earth that breathes, has ever breathed, came from that place. Because we know if we believe in the ark and we believe in Noah, there was nobody else that he could have been. So finally, we can see more and more that the historical evidence supports our prophetic stance of an ancient people who left modern day Iraq, or whatever you wanted to call it then, or Babylonia, and made their home here in Britain, bringing with them a deep and abiding love of Jesus Christ and his Father. And I leave these words with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.